Hey guys, this is Trevor Cycle One McDougall coming at you again from the studios of CGCM Radio. Uh, we got something a little special for you this week. Um, we have some special guests we're going to be interviewing. Uh, we're talking to Ludwig Turner and Marcus Johansson, coming straight from Stockholm, Sweden, from the band Reach. You may recognize some of their music. They had an album called Reach Out to Rock in 2014 and The Great Divine to Critical Acclaim in 2018. So they've come and joined us. We talked for about uh, about half an hour, and uh, you know we'll catch up with them coming up right now. All right, so uh, we're sitting here today with uh, a couple members of the band Reach from Stockholm, Sweden. How are you doing, guys? All good. All fantastic. That's Great. good, and thanks for the time and sitting down with us. Um, just to get things started here, I see online that uh, the, the band has been classified in a couple different ways. How would you guys describe the band yourselves? Is it just a rock band or is it alt rock? Is it? How would you describe um, yourselves to somebody who's never heard them before? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would probably describe us as, as the reach sound because I think now we finally found it, I guess. But uh, to describe it to someone uh, who hasn't heard us, maybe it's it's, um, it's it's very I don't know. Well, it's, it's very uh, uh, well. It's, it's very alternative, I'd say. It's yeah. a bit more proggier these days. Um, yeah. Well, listening back over the last couple albums you guys have done, um, so Reach has finally found its sound, or is there a, a, an evolution to the sound due to the the band members changing, or? Just what's happening in the world these days? But, uh, the thing is that me and it was me and Ludwig that that started the band, and we have always been writing the songs. So it's it has nothing really to do with the with the members. It's just we have always wanted to find our own style. Okay, that's cool. So we just tried out different stuff, and I think oh, nice. we're coming to close to what we want to do. Well, and it all sounds good from that. Sorry? I said it all sounds good from what I've heard so far. <laughs> That's great. Well, we've played together when we started this band, like 2012 or something. Yeah. We started playing together. Yeah, so, something like that. Of course, you know, we, we become better. We practice more. So as we evolve as musicians, we can do cooler stuff, I guess. So well, That's cool. Um, Ludwig, you were originally trained in guitar by uh, Tony Berg from Alien. That's um, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Has any of what he's taught you crept into the music at all? or? <laughs> yes. That is the, that is the, I, I tell you, I've, I've done like some um, classes for p piano and vocals and guitar and stuff. Uh, Tony was like all into Richie Blackmore, as you might expect. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would never forget, I'll see if I can do it as in English, but he did this comparison, like comparing guitar playing to soccer, football. Really? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was like. Uh, yeah, in, in the way you speak when you're from Gothenburg, which is very special, I can't do it in English, but and he said something like when when you're passing when you're passing the ball, it's playing rhythm guitar, and when you're scoring a goal, it's playing solo guitar. Uh, you know, I I took that with me. I have no idea what it means, but I took that with me for the rest of my life. Well, consi considering the legacy of Alien alone, I think it's any advice from him would be good advice. I, <laughs> I yeah, it was funny, you know, every, we had like different uh, guitar teachers at school. Uh, I had different guitar teachers like for each, uh, each semester, say. So I had, uh, and you were supposed to have a different guy for each year, but I had Tony for two years. And I think I'm the first one ever in the history of that school. Twice. You're not supposed to have the same teacher twice because you have like these jazzy dudes and and whatnot. <clears throat> but I had Tony and he was like, uh, welcome Ludwig, uh, this is uh, Rainbow. And we started playing Rainbow songs. And that was like, that was really cool. So That sounds like a cool teacher. I, you know. It really was <laughs> like a rock, like school of rock teacher, you know. <laughs> So I also know that uh, you and Ludwig have been involved with some stage production with shows like uh, Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again, things like that. Are you still involved with any kind of stage production? Are you an ABBA fan? Well, well I am an ABBA fan, but I haven't done, like, like not, not any of the big ones like Mamma Mia. I would love to do Mamma Mia, but I've done like minor, like, like smaller productions. Oh, okay, um, I read somewhere I, that you did Mamma Mia. Well, 
we let's let's stick with that. Okay. It was good on my CV, so <laughs> let's stick with that. Well, well, add that to your resume, right? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, just a quick question then. Uh, Sweden has become the real new breeding ground for hard rock, much like the LA strip used to be back in the, the major heydays of glam and long hair and more makeup than your mother and sister combined. Why do you think hard rock is such a huge popularity over there? And is there any bands in Sweden that you'd really like to tour with that you haven't yet? Uh, for uh, for starters, why there are so many good uh, hard rock bands, hard rock bands from Sweden? I guess it 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 uh, it's it all started with uh, uh, Europe in the beginning of the eighties and all those bands that followed, mm -hmm. and then uh, it's like. We have, it's very easy to, uh, to, um, to learn an instrument in Sweden and to get access to rehearsal spaces and, uh, and stuff like that. It's very easy to start a band. And then we have dark, darkness here for, uh, for about eight months a year. So yeah. there's not, nothing else to do than to be down at the rehearsal room and play rock music, I guess. That's one of the main reasons, I think. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of good music coming out. What about bands you haven't toured with? Is there any that uh, you'd really like to go and hit the road with? Yeah. Yes. Many. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I know you guys are going out this December with uh, Heat and uh, Def Rat, I believe it is, correct? Yeah. And, and uh, speaking of Heat, uh, you have Eric Gromwall uh, as your manager. Is that still correct? Yes. Has he contributed anything to the new upcoming album? Does he play on it or anything like that with you? Does he collaborate? Um, um, or can not, you say yeah? <laughs> yeah, well, well, he's not. No, I know uh, I, I would have loved that. I would have thought it was really cool. But he helped out in ways like, it's, it's really cool with, I think you feel the same, but Eric really takes this, this role super seriously. Like, why wouldn't he take it seriously? But, you know, he's, he's really, as a manager, it's, it's like crazy. Like take for tonight, for instance, he put up six interviews in one evening. Like it's difficult to get two within a week, like with schedules and stuff. And he, he just makes things work. He's amazing. And as far as helping out in the album, he's like he, a lot of feedback when sending him the songs and he tells us what he thinks. And I, you know, he had some good points. I know for a fact, like two songs that, that he came with feedback that we actually changed the song. So, oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I really enjoy uh, their last album as well. It's it's amazing. Yeah, music. you know. So it's speaking of classic. new albums, uh, you know, you've got two new singles out right now: "The Law" and uh, "Higher Ground," which are doing quite well for you. Um, when can people expect the full length album? You know I think we pushed it forward to uh, around uh, what around uh, December beginning of be beginning of the next year, I guess, because all of the pandemic. So we 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 were supposed to release it this September. Okay. Uh, but now it's pushed forward six months, I think. So the question that I've had a few people but, ask me to but ask we, you. We're going to release singles through that time. Okay, that's good. It's going to come out new songs until that. Oh, cool. Um, so like I said, I've had a few people ask me to ask you then, is Black Lady finally going to get to see a, a live, uh, an actual album or is this just going to continue to be a live treat? Uh, oh. Not on this album? <laughs> No, 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 not really. It, uh, it was one of the really, really, really earlier year songs. So I don't think we're going to, we released it, we released it once and, th and that's it, I guess. Yeah. For now, at least. We'll see in a couple of years, maybe release a early, early years album LP. I don't know, but for now. Maybe Nothing a greatest hits that, bonus no. package or something. Yeah, that'd be yeah cool. something like that, maybe. <clears throat> yeah, that'd be good. So... Speaking of this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the music industry is seeing an unprecedented change like right across the board with every genre. It used to be that bands made their money from album sales. And then it became, it was made from touring. And with the pandemic, we really, you guys really don't have, you know, either income coming in right now. What are, in your opinion, what's going to have to change and adapt with live shows or album sales or anything all because of this? Do you have any ideas? uh that's a good question 
I, I really hope that that countries uh, uh, like uh, also staten i länderna vad heter det? The, 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 govern, the governments of all these countries in Europe, America, that they uh, include musicians and cultural workers in all these uh, help, uh, help money that they're giving out uh, at, uh, during this pandemic time uh, to help people stay alive until we can go out uh, touring and play music again. Yeah. So a lot of bands though are doing like um, uh, like social media concerts now. They're setting up with social distancing from the cameras and everything. They're doing live shows and actually selling tickets and streaming yeah. them online. Is that something you guys have thought of, or we did a little like uh, one of those streaming live sessions. It was cool. Um, yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It was nice. You know, you could have you could have done it with better video and audio. Uh, you know, if you're being a bit nerdy about that, but of course, like we want it to sound great always, like the sound, not only the song should be good, we want it to sound good. So, and I've, we've seen like Moustache did this, um, the Swedish band Moustache, they did this live, uh, live, they've done several, I think. Yeah, several, Yeah, three, I guess. Which are really good. So, so I, I think that's a cool thing. I hope like bands are gonna continue doing that even after the pandemic is over. Because it's really nice, but you don't have to go from Brazil to Sweden to watch a gig, you know, right. you could somehow take half, must, the, half the ticket price for a stream show or something. Yeah, it must be hard on the artists though, because I'm sure you guys, when you're on stage, you really get, uh, how do I put it, uh, hyped from getting the feedback from the crowd. And all of a sudden you're, yeah, you're just in front of us. Of, of, of the thing is to play live. That's what we want to do. So, so yeah. these, uh, like, I, I'm, I'm really, it's really cool that bands are doing for me personally, I think it was it was fun when we were doing it, but it's weird with no audience. It, it's really I, I've gotten to see bands that never ever come to Canada. Bands like um, uh, Stop Stop would be one that I've watched twice now. Um, Crazy uh, Crash Diet, I should say, is another one. They did ah. a good a good live one and sold special T-shirts and things like that. I would I, never I, get I, the opportunity to see them in in my nearest city would be Toronto, and I don't think any of them have ever been over here. So it, it was nice to get that opportunity i guess as a fan yeah that's what i'm talking about it's really cool you can like for when this is over if you do a show for 400 people in a venue you can like you yeah, there's no limit if you have a camera you can charge what, what i don't know five dollars for watching like a stream show the same live show just stream that shit yeah cool so it, and, and also the hard thing for us we aren't that kind of a big band yet so it's for us now to do that, it will cost more than we will earn from it. True. That's but also I, one of the, one I, you, of the things. You guys will be there, I it. guarantee it. In my opinion, you guys will be there. I, I promise you this. Oh, that's, you know, it's a great <laughs> sound. So let's get back to your, your new album that's coming out. Do you have a title for it? Or is there any information you can tell us about it or anything like that? Oh, they can't say that. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I don't, I don't know, I don't know <laughs> if, we, if it's... But, yeah, you say it, so you get blamed with the whole thing. Uh, well, you can say it. It's called. Uh, it will be called "The Promise of a Life," the new album. Okay, cool. Is the artwork yeah. on it going to be similar to what you've released on the single so far? Yeah, we we that was one of the thing when we worked with this new uh, artist that that have uh, done the single uh, covers. We wanted everything to follow. Uh, a theme, yeah, a, a, a theme or red, red, red line, line red yeah. line, yeah. Yeah, be more cohesive with one another. Exactly, yeah. because that's that's one of the things <clears throat> we always had a tough time doing. But now we're working with someone that does it really good. So, yeah, I, I like the artwork. To me, personally, um, I think artwork is very important to an album. And these days, yeah. with everything being digital, and you get a thumbnail, you know, an inch by an inch big. A lot of bands don't put the effort into the artwork anymore. Do you feel it's still very important? Yeah, of course. Uh, it's like, and, and these days when uh, vinyl is coming back and uh, it's important to have a really good cover that you can have on the vinyls as well and uh, on the merchandise too. Mm -hmm. So, Are you yeah, going to have a vinyl with it? Sorry? 
Is there going to be a vinyl release of it with a Yeah, of course. Yeah, of For course. Sure. Yeah. Vagelis, I want to give a shout out to Vagelis, the guy who made the art, like the the artwork for uh, for the singles and who would do, do it for the album cover. That guy is uh, like he didn't get any like instructions, like specific instructions for an artwork. He just sent us that. I think it's like the first thing he sent and I was like, yeah, that is that is dope. It really looks like it's like sort of 70s yeah it's a mix of like old zeppelin covers yeah. and uh, kind of a modern vibe to it as well yeah that's the first thing i, I thought it. had a real psychedelic feel to it, it was yeah really exactly kind of cool yeah yeah that's cool so is with that coming out then is there any possibility of a live dvd or blu-ray or anything like that or is that up to the up to uh, eric <laughs> oh, cool maybe yeah. from the tour yeah yeah, but yeah. Ho hopefully in the future maybe i don't know maybe not right now but maybe one two albums more and then we have the like the big following that we can do a full live uh, dvd recording i guess it's not easy to do it as a support act because we will have to do support act tours a lot now but yeah. i don't know if, if uh, two more albums and then maybe hopefully yeah. I think it'd be really cool if you guys could do a split DVD almost with, uh, you know, you, Heat, and Def Rat. It would be kind of cool to get all three bands oh, yeah. into one DVD. Awesome. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm oh, sure. The problem there is that we all have different record labels. Oh, that's true, too. That's, yeah. that's the problem. It's it's up to the record labels. We'll do but it. It's always about the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always about the money, isn't it? Yeah. So, so what's your favorite song to play live, then, when you get out there? Um, the, the, the last shows we did it was really fun to do the new song higher ground yeah. it was actually the we, we did two shows with heat and crash diet this february and then uh, it was the first time we played the uh, higher ground live and i think we all enjoyed it yeah it was not pretty much it's new as yeah. well so it's extra exciting you know yeah. first time live that, that's cool it's very it's like a, an epic song, sort of, it's like with all these uh, string parts and, and you know yeah, everything. Yeah. And it's very progressive that song as well. Like yeah. the whole new album is, mo it's like more, it's more. So it's it's fun to play because it happens a lot of stuff in it. That was the first thing I thought of too when I heard Higher Ground. It's a lot more progressive than what you've done in the past. Yeah. You know? But uh, you know, one of the cool things is one of our contributors to the um, CGCM here actually said she lives right around the corner from you, Marcus, and she knows you. And oh, she, saw, she saw you at the uh, at the show at Crash Diet. Her name, her name is Rachel Lee. Oh, yeah, I know her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. I tried to get some dirt from her, but she wouldn't spill any beans or anything. So I, I guess your secrets are safe. <laughs> <clears throat> I tried, you know. <laughs> Got to do a little research before an interview, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good fun, though. <laughs> But speaking of embarrassing things, have you guys have any embarrassing road stories you'd like to share? Or? Yeah, what about the intro on the first show this year? <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah that, that's not so fun. That's just no, that's just, just, that's just, just boring. boring. Yeah, that's <laughs> not nice. Like the, yeah, we fucked up the in intro basically. So we, we had to like... We were out touring a couple of years ago as support act to Eclipse. Okay, another uh, good band. And then we had, uh, I think, yeah, one day off in, in Prague. Czech, uh, Czech, Czech Republic, yeah. and then mm. Ludwig woke uh, woke me up one morning and said the bus was on fire. Oh, and I really, you know, panicked. What the fuck you're saying? The bus is on fire? And I was rushing up. You know, the hair was all over the place. Nothing to wear, just underwear. And then, like, I don't know, ten seconds later, I'm just kidding. Here's a beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was one of my great, like my most fun memories. And, that, and, and that's all I remember from Prague. Then it was like total party for two days in a row. So I guess the real question would be then is, has there been payback? Uh, you're too nice. You never do it. Uh, no, that. not no, not really. Oh, so it's still when, coming. When you least expect it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's that's perfect. Uh, you know, that's yeah. You yeah, always we make. Don't, we don't things. like every band. I guess we don't. Lovely, least you know, awkward, awkward, empty, empty houses yeah. shows. You know, those are not always really cool to do when you are like a big sounding, big chorus kind of band mm -hmm. uh, in front of not like when you're we're a three piece and we're still more 
people in the band and in the audience, you know, yeah. we've done some of those gigs and that, that sucks. But you know, it usually turns into a jam night anyway. Yeah. just, we play Sabbath songs or yeah. something. So. so what do you think would be better then is going from the half empty clubs to the full stage or finally reaching the full stage and ending up back in the half empty clubs? <laughs> That's a good I know one. a lot of big bands have done that. They've actually yeah, come I, back. That must, be, that must be tough. Uh, yeah, but I think we are, we, we're quite uh, happy just, if, if there's people there, we're happy to play. We're That's not cool. that, you know, we're not like, we haven't like, yeah, we're going for the arenas now nothing like that it's like we, we're now we're we're doing the clubs now and then just do it better better and hopefully bigger clubs bigger clubs and then we'll see we're grinding yeah so yeah we know it's it's a it's a lot of touring is that it, it, it's at least 10 years of touring before we can maybe maybe see an arena it that's how it looks today for bands yeah well unfortunately yeah uh... As long as you're having fun, I think that's what's most important. Yeah, of course. Most definitely. So just before I let you guys go then, because I was told I had about a half an hour, yep. uh, is there anything else you'd like to say to anybody out there like who's listening or watching? Oh, well, like, especially these, uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone. Thank you for taking the time to talk with us and, uh, and, uh, you know, featuring us in your show and for everyone who's listening and supporting us. And yeah, it means, means the world, um, especially in these days, in these crazy days. True. And, uh, you know, take care, be careful. Don't wash your freaking hands. Don't cough each other in the face and just, yeah, take your, spend your time to listen to some good music yeah. and we'll start over again next year with some rock and roll. Yeah. Hey guys, so there you have it. That was uh, Marcus and Ludwig from the band Reach uh, coming to us from Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, not a long interview, but it was definitely fun to do. So you can check out their albums, the 2014 Reach Out to Rock and their 2018 The Great Divine. And if you check where you can listen to all your music these days, uh, like for example, Spotify, they've got a couple new singer <laughs> singles out called Higher and The Law. It's a... Um, well, it's kind of a new direction, like we were mentioning. There. It's a little more proggish, but it's still, still really damn good. And uh, the videos are, are excellently done. So I, I recommend that you go check those out and uh, write us on to the, our Facebook page. At, uh, you know, look us up on CGCM on Facebook and send us a message. And want, let us know what you think. And uh, definitely reach out to uh, the band Reach and check out their Facebook page and, and give them a like too, because I'm sure they, they need the support these days. So until next time. Keep rocking.